Hello, everyone. You get your Bibles out. We'll turn to a few scriptures. Some of them I'll just read. Some of them we'll turn to. <clears throat> I didn't really get a catchy title for this talk. Maybe one will reveal itself <laughs> as we go through it. But <clears throat> talking about, uh, well, just a few thoughts on making making choices. And more specifically, to choose to uh, to be like our example, to choose to be like the Lord and his example that he's uh, given to us and what that might look like. So first, uh, let's go to Joshua 24 in the Old Testament. <clears throat> if you heard the word choices and heard me turning to Joshua, you probably already know what I'm going <laughs> to talk about. But we'll start in verse 13. And um, Joshua was talking to the people here and um, appealing to them, appealing to their to their logic, I suppose. And um, uh, and the Lord's really talking to them here and getting them to make a decision whether they're going to follow him or not. It says in verse 13, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which uh, which ye built not, and ye dwell in them. Um, of the vineyards and olive yards, um, which ye planted not, do you eat? So I'll just pause there for a second. The Lord's done similar things for us. Things that we didn't deserve, things that he's given us, uh, the uh, inheritance that he's promised us, the, um, the life, uh, our own life that he's changed and any healings, any anything that he's given us, any blessings that we've received, that was a, a gift from him. It goes on in verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. So again, just pause there for a second. Like us, you know, um, we served other gods, which are not gods. We served other idols and anything that we put above uh, the Lord and, and serve and lust after and, and go after and use our time and resources to, uh, to obtain these things um, would be an idol. Um, and anything we're doing out to, outside of the Lord, um, not walking in the Lord, is that. And it says, uh, um, and in Egypt, you know, we were brought out of our own Egypt, um, our old life, our old way of living, our worldly um, life, our carnal man. We were brought out of that. It says, um, you did things then in one way. You walked in that way. Now I want you to walk in a different way. I want you to serve the Lord and not do these things that everybody else is doing. Verse 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, or if you're thinking, oh, that doesn't sound fun, or it doesn't sound like a good idea, or I had some, had some other thoughts or plans in mind, it says, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. You know, we dwell in a land of a country that, I guess, in some regard, started off with some of the Lord's principles, some of the scriptural principles, and has gotten further and further from that. And now, and even then, we serve all kinds of other things in this land. <clears throat> um, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up out of our, uh, and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, so from their old life, um, from the house of bondage. And uh, bondage was in uh, spiritual gifts today. It was very on point to the talk, actually. Um, out from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us all in the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed out of this uh 
out of this bondage is where the Lord has has brought us. Um, it can be a complicated thought or a simple thought that we are brought out of those that bondage and what that means and how we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to behave not being in that bondage. Um, so, for example, today, uh, I had a lot of work to do. I had a lot of, well, it's become increasingly the same thing almost every day, but um, deadlines for today. Um, and I had stress and panic and those kinds of things. I put myself into a bondage. I put myself into a bondage worrying about those things. Because the Lord has said, no matter what happens, all things will work for the good. And the Lord has said that he has promised to provide and take care of all of our needs and all of those things, should anything happen. And putting myself in that bondage was a matter of faith or lack of faith in, in those promises. Um, you could say also, I put myself into bondage by maybe having an overreaction to something that the kids have done. And, um, and then feeling the need to continue to be angry and walk around, oh, I, there's a division now between us. I have to be angry now. Just have to be angry, walk around angry. <clears throat> but I put myself in that, in that bondage. Yes, there are um, uh, consequences for not doing what you, what you need to do, same in the Lord. Um, but there's no reason that I would have to change character and put myself into a bondage at all. Um, so with that thought, and don't have to turn here, in John 13, verse uh, 34, um, can turn if you want, but it's just a scripture or two. This was just after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, all of the disciples, including Judas. Um, and in verse John 13, verse 34, he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love to one another. And the point I want to bring out there is, in verse 35, that it says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. How are you uh, behaving? How do you react? How do you walk in your life um, exhibiting this faith? This faith that you already have everything. This faith that the power that created the heavens and the earth is available to you. And all the promises in the word of God are true. Do you have, do you have that faith? Do you walk through that faith? And if you do, if you have need of nothing, because the Lord will provide, and you have all things basically in your back pocket, what do you do from there? Well, that's the Lord's position. What did he do? The Lord, just we'll read some scriptures about it, doesn't need anything. He does not need a thing from us. He doesn't need us to praise him. That's for our good. He doesn't need us to do anything. That's for our good. He doesn't need anything. He's created all things. And he's done all of uh, all of this that we see, that we hear, um, everything in our life, everything going on in this world, again, for our good, for our good, to benefit us. Um, and so what he's done is, is an example that Jesus gave, um, self-sacrificing. Um, the love, the self-sacrifice that we have for each other, brothers and sisters, as we just read, uh, for those people that are in the world, for all others, this will show what we are. This will show who we are and what, and what we represent. Let's go to Acts chapter 17. <clears throat> Acts 
Is this on? It is on. Am I quiet? I'm sorry. I feel kind of low energy after a stressful day. Um, Acts 17 and verse 24. Starts off saying, God that made the world and all things therein. That's who we're dealing with. That's, he has everything. He's made everything. He doesn't just have everything. He's spoken it all into existence. Every, every last bit of it. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in the temples made with hands. Verse 25. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he need anything. He doesn't need anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. He's the one that gave you anything that you have going on. All good things. Um, verse 26. And hath made, uh, I'm sorry, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. God does not need anything. And again, we're looking at the, the character. He's created us uh, in his image. He's, he's now caused us to be born again and put, that, uh, put his Holy Spirit inside of us and given us access to all things, that mountains may be moved, that people may be healed, that the blind might see, that all these things would happen coming from us. Not that we take that liberty and that freedom and we consume it on our own lusts, and we go after what we want and we become selfish and we become all those things. But the power is there for us and we have it all. It's our job now to turn around and give to everyone else, to be a self-sacrifice to everyone else. <clears throat> Don't turn here, but in uh, Job 22, one of his friends were talking to him, not a great friend. Uh, in verse two, but he did say something smart here. Can a, can a man be profitable unto God um, as, as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself or to someone else? Can you be smart, smart enough that it, God's going to benefit from that? No. <coughs> can you be anything enough that God's really going to benefit from that? No, he's got everything he needs. He made it all. Um, so no, we cannot, uh, we're not doing the Lord any favors. This is all for us. Another verse in Job, um, later in the chapter, one of his friends actually speaking as, uh, as the Lord, a sort of a prophet, said, um, If thou sinnest, what doest thou, thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? So I should take the opposite approach here that um, if, you, if, if, you're, if you go around doing not what you're supposed to do, is that going to take God down a notch? No. Then in the opposite, in, in verse 7, if thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? Nothing. He's got everything. He's got all things. So good or bad doesn't help him or harm him at all because all of this is for us. All this is for us. Let's, uh, we can turn to Psalm 50. <clears throat> I'll just grab my water real quick. So I'll be turning to Psalm 50. And in verse 9, Lord God saying, I will take no bullock out of thy house. It's not going to take, he doesn't need it. He's not going to take it from you. Nor he goats, he goats out of thy folds. Irie, what's a he goat called? 
A billy goat. A billy goat. She was just telling me the other day. <laughs> um, for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mount mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. He's saying here, for the word for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. He has no need from you for anything. I think we drove that point home. Let's, do, let's go to Romans 12. <clears throat> so what then? What do we do? Well, the Lord God was our example. He did all this for us, created all this for us. Um, that we might enjoy with him later on no more sorrow no more tears no more dying no more anything that is in the negative um romans 12 verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice just like the lord but we don't have to go through what the lord did we walk in a way where this is true holy acceptable unto god and it says which is your reasonable service he's saying he's not he doesn't ask much it sounds like much in the natural oh man what i have plans i, I want to do this i want to do that i want to i want to react this way i want to say this things to that person i want to whatever whatever it is <clears throat> verse two and be not conformed to this world don't be like them but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and that's what these verses are, are trying to do that's what this message is trying to do that's what this freedom from the bondage is meant to do for us this renewing of our mind that all things become new we don't walk that way anymore and it's a learning process as we grow in, in the Lord. We don't walk that way anymore. We walk in, in a totally different way, by totally different rules, by totally different logic, that we already have everything. <clears throat> Verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is... Uh, oh, I didn't finish. Verse 2, By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we do those things through faith. We walk according to faith. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man um, the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, every one members of another so two points out out of that whole thing living sacrifice like jesus was you don't need anything that the lord can't supply and sometimes it takes patience and pressing in and prayer and all those things but we have access to it and eventually we'll be transformed and it'll just all be right there now we have sort of a, a taste of it. Now we have a doorway to it. Now we have access to it. We've been given authority to speak on these things. Um, it's a down payment of, of what's to come. But more or less, you need nothing. So serve others. And it ends here by going into um, our unity, one body, selflessly serving one another, no, no gain to yourself, because, again, you already have everything. Let's go to Galatians. Oh, getting towards the end. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Talking about that bondage and everything again here. Uh, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty, this freedom that we've been given. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law 
all the Old Testament, all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Again, that's how important these things are. And Jesus was the example. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, focus on serving others and God through serving others. And you won't even have time to focus on yourself. There's a lot to do there. 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So it's talking that it's a weird combination from 17 to 18. You could not do the things that you would. You can't walk perfectly. You can't 100% think like God all the time because we're in an earthen vessel. But, says, if you're led of the Spirit, if your heart is for being as the Lord is to feed his sheep, to preach the gospel, to serve, you are not under the law. You're walking in the Spirit. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, selfishness, isn't it? Fornication, selfishness again. Uncleanness, I don't know. I don't like my house to be unclean either, but I don't think that's what it's talking about. Uh, lasciviousness. Idolatry. We talked about going after other things. Witchcraft. Anything you're trying to solve a problem outside of leaning on the Lord. All that's witchcraft. Hatred. No reason to have this hatred. Uh, selfishness is what that is. Again, variance, emulations, wrath, um, strife. You're striving, you're, you know, especially in your, in your own flesh to go after something because you covet it, because you want it, because, or you're not relying on what the, doing something in the Lord's time, whatever it is, self-centered, uh, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, you know, you envy something, self-centered, isn't it? Drunkenness. Why, why is that bad? Well, you can't help anybody, can you? <laughs> you're drunk. And that goes for all sorts of inebriations. Selfishness. It's just uh, serving the flesh. Revelings and the such like, of which I tell you before, I've told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, because they're not walking in the spirit. It's not about breaking those rules. It's just the fact that you're not walking in the spirit. You don't have, you're not going even in the right direction. <clears throat> But the fruit of the Spirit is love, which we talked about, joy, which we have, peace, which we have, long suffering and gentleness, and all this patience that we have, goodness, faith, which is paramount that we walk in, uh, in those promises, meekness, you have the strength to do something maybe negative or self serving or exert your power or exert your will, but you won't do it because it's the Lord's will that will be done. Temperance. Um, flex, you know, being flexible, being, you know, not rigid in your own thoughts and ideas against such. There is no law. There is no there is no um, law from the Old Testament and laws in modern times don't make anything against these either. Uh, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. If you're meant to be a living example of what God is like, then act like it. Because that's what we're supposed to be. Let us not uh, be desirous of vain glory or provoking one another or envying one another and those kinds of things. All right, well, I'm just basically out of time. Um, let me... <laughs> Let me just do one more. Colossians 3, if you would. While you're turning there, Romans 8 says, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Um, Colossians 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above, 
which Christ sitteth on the right hand of where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. For your affection, or set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. For ye are dead. That's it. It was over. You made that choice to not go and walk in that direction, because the direction of that was death forever. It was a good choice that you made <laughs> to not go that way. It says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. <laughs> Mortify, put to death, so that means, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, there are these list of things again, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, con, something, <laughs> covetousness, which is idolatry. A lot of these things are overlapping and have similar meanings, and the focus is yourself, really, on all of those things. For which things sake which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, because they're all self-serving, right? In the which ye also walked in some time and lived in them, I did. Uh, now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not to one, one another, um, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds and to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And we're not talking just a physical image, but in the likeness of, in the character of. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, um, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, Let's be merciful to people kind humble meek that controlled strength we talked about long suffering and patience and all that forbearing one another forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye and above all these things put on charity again at the top love which is the bond this connection of perfectness and let the peace of god Rule in your hearts. I didn't do that today, earlier today. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the wor word of Christ dwell in you richly and in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Another way that people know, we put our all into everything as if we're doing it for the Lord. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for the boss. We're not doing it for the teacher. We're doing it um, as unto the Lord. And it goes, gives some examples. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Um, why? I don't know. Maybe there was uh, the, the idea that, um, you know, the Lord's going to lift up uh, the ones who are not capable and show through his power to make them capable. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it was that uh, husbands will um, want to do want to do anything for their wives. And so they have control and power. And he's saying, don't. Don't, uh, don't have your own control and power. Husbands, love your wives. Um, be not bitter against them. You know, husbands, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to be the head. You're going to have to take the hits. You're going to have to do whatever is needed for, for the family. Okay? You're going to have to be that uh, self-sacrifice for them. It says, but be not bitter against them in doing that. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Uh, fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things. And we don't really have any of that anymore. Maybe you think, of, maybe think you're a servant at work. I don't know. Uh, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily 
as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So just a few thoughts there, reminders really that um, we have to choose every single day how we will be and who we will serve and what we will do and how we will act and what we will show and what people will see from us. We um, have the power to be as the Lord now, have God's nature now, um, and it's, it's not over yet and we're learning and we're growing, but we have this opportunity to redeem the time. Another thing came out of the gifts, redeem this time to step it up and uh, and be more like we should be. Leave it there.